Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Hallett X1 resin printer. The Hallett series originally came from Creality, but it has since been moved under their industrial brand, Piocrate, which also produces extra large 3D printers that use pellets instead of filament. But let's get back to the machine that I'm reviewing today. The Hallett X1 is a 16K resolution resin printer with a build volume of 211 by 118 by 200 millimeters. Its Z-axis motion system uses dual laid screws with linear rails. In addition to the standard features you'd expect from the latest 16K resin printer, it also introduces some unique design elements. The LED array light source is split into 92 zones, so if your print is small, it will only activate the zones necessary based on the part's position and size. The build platform is automatically leveled, eliminating the need for the traditional paper method of checking four corners and tightening screws manually. It also features a quick release design. Simply twist the handles and the print is released. Unlike most resin printers, the resin tray moves up during printing, keeping the build platform stationary. This helps reduce the chance of print failures, especially with larger models, by eliminating the stress caused by hundreds or thousands of up and down movements. The printer's screen and USB connector are located on the top for easy access, and the cover can be lifted with one hand. An optional resin pump is available with the combo version, and it can automatically feed and drain resin while also heating it to maintain optimal printing conditions. The price of the Hallett X1 is around $600, and the unit I'm testing is the combo version with the resin pump. As of the time of recording this video, the combo version is actually on sale, making it even cheaper than the machine without the pump. I would like to thank Piocrate for sending us this machine to review and for sponsoring today's video. As always, even though this is a sponsored review, we won't hold back from pointing out any cons. With that said, let's get started. The packaging of this machine is fairly compact, with an additional layer of inner foam for protection. On top, there's a thin tray designed to protect the machine from resin drips when removing prints. The entire machine is placed inside a bag, making it easy to lift out. All accessories are neatly packed and protected by another layer of foam. Alongside the machine, we have a metal resin tray. This is a prototype version. I later received a black painted one, so you might see a different tray used in some of the prints. The package also includes the build platform, drip tray, some tools, and instead of an external power brick, a power cord that plugs directly into the machine. The resin tray is secured by two arms, which I really prefer over the dual thumbscrew design found on other machines. The arms also act as a visual reminder, so it's unlikely you'll forget to lock the tray in place. The build platform is free to move, but will be automatically secured once a print starts, eliminating the risk of printing with a loose platform. Twisting the handle releases the print, so scraping is rarely needed unless the print is very small. You can reinstall the platform in any orientation. There's no designated front or back. The screen and USB port are located on the top, the power connector, the inlet for the resin tube, and the USB-C cable to control the resin pump are located at the back. The pump has a tube that connects to a resin bottle. You'll need to remove the plastic retainer for the tube and sensor cable, install the mount, then connect the sensor and cable. The resin sensor, which controls feeding, rests behind the tray. Before each print, you'll need to place the sensor onto the tray. If you forget, as I did, the machine will alert you before dispensing resin, preventing a mess. Now let's power on the machine. The setup process includes selecting your language and location, accepting the user agreement, and connecting to Wi-Fi. Both the Hallett Box Slicer and Chitu Box support direct job transfer over the network. That's all you need to do. No manual leveling is required, as the printer will auto-level itself. Even without adjusting any other settings, it should be ready to print right out of the box. Before starting my first print, I performed a firmware update, which included updates for the printer, touchscreen, and resin pump. After setting up the machine, I installed the free Hallett Box Slicer that came with it. Let's start with a simple Rook print. As you can see, the green lights on the platform indicate which of the 92 LED zones will activate for this print. In this case, only a small portion lights up. There's a button called One Piece Print, likely a translation error. It probably means One Click Print or something like Auto Print. It automatically sets the resin parameters, adds a base and supports, and starts the export process. It took about 22 seconds to slice, then another 52 seconds to export the file. There's no progress bar in the dialog itself, but a progress bar does appear at the bottom of the screen. It works, but placing the bar inside the dialog would make more sense. I wanted to print the Rook without supports since I've printed this model many times and it doesn't need them. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't find any option to remove the supports while keeping the base. Next, I attempted to send the print over the network. The printer appeared in the slicer, but there was also a ghost printer, likely left over from before a firmware update. I selected the active one labeled free and sent the file, which uploaded in about 11 seconds. However, the print doesn't start automatically. You have to return to the main menu and click an unlabeled round icon in the top right. This opens the printer manager where you can start the job. The print started by pumping resin from the bottle into the vat. Once the level was sufficient, the resin tray with the light source moves up to the platform and starts printing. The total time was 2 hours and 35 minutes, including resin pumping. Unfortunately, the finished screen didn't show the total print time. The rook printed successfully, but had unnecessary supports. After removing the platform, which auto-unlocks at the end of a print, I used the included drip tray to catch the part. This worked well and prevented drips on the machine or table. I washed the part in IPA for 3 minutes and cured it for another 3 minutes. I printed another version trying to avoid supports, but again, there was no option to remove them. The model came out okay, but support removal left marks, especially visible on small details. Some were so small I didn't even notice them until I used a macro lens. This issue isn't with the machine, but with the slicer. So, I printed another Rook using Chitubox Pro. This time, I only added a base, no supports. Chitubox made more sense, it showed the layer preview, model info, resin usage, and estimated print time. All must have features for a slicer. The network workflow was smoother too. Just click send via network, select the printer, enter the default password 123456 and start the print. The time was about the same, 2.5 hours, but the results were better. After the same post-processing steps, the print came out cleaner without unnecessary supports. From the back, the difference was more obvious. Next, I printed a lizard model, a standard test I use with all resin printers. Since it's larger, about 40% of the LED zones were activated. Slicing, supporting, and exporting took around 1 minute and 40 seconds. The ghost printer icon was now gone, so I sent the file over the network. Because the file was larger than the rook, uploading took nearly a minute. Again, I had to go back to the main screen to manually start the print via the printer manager. The print took 4 hours and 9 minutes. The lizard came out beautifully, crisp details and great surface finish. The supports were placed underneath, and while there were visible marks on the bottom, they were necessary for this model. I then compared this print with results from 8K, 14K, and another 16K printer. The 8K print was clearly lower in detail, but between the 14K and 16K models, there was almost no visible difference, even under a macro lens. Then I printed a large 180mm tall Goku model. Normally, I would print it standing or at a 45 degree angle, but the platform is large enough that I laid it flat. One of the benefits of resin printing is that layer time remains constant regardless of the number or size of models. Printing it standing would require around 3,600 layers at 0.05 millimeters, taking roughly 12 hours. By laying it flat, the height was reduced to about 53 millimeters, and the print finished in just 3 hours and 40 minutes, saving significant time. The print came off the platform easily, thanks to the auto-release. I oriented the model so supports were on the back, which preserved the front surface. After removing the support base and going through the same wash and cure steps, the front was very clean. However, as expected, putting all the support at the back leaves a lot of marks and requires applying a few layers of primer and sanding it smooth. Finally, I wanted to challenge the printer by filling the entire build plate with as many models as possible. 
I used the Hallet Box slicer again, which automatically added supports, even to models that didn't need them, like Big Ben, the Eiffel Tower, and the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Still, I let it print. The job took about seven hours. Despite the full build plate, the platform released everything easily. Most prints came out fine, though the Eiffel Tower failed, possibly due to its small size. Big Ben, the Arc de Triomphe, and the Leaning Tower printed successfully. Unfortunately, I damaged two Big Ben models while removing supports. The Leaning Tower came out the best, although a few poles were accidentally broken by me. Support on such small models really hurts the surface quality, which could have been avoided using Chitu Box instead. The only reason I used Hallet Box here was for testing purposes. Realistically, I'll stick with Chitu Box when I need to print serious models on this machine. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. One. The model release mechanism is working well. You don't need to scrape the model off and risk damaging it, at least most of the time, unless you're printing something really tiny that won't allow the platform to pop it off. Two, the platform can insert it in either direction. Once the print starts, it locks itself automatically. From my own resin printing experience, there is always a chance I forget to secure it, resulting in print failures. Three, the resin tray is secured by two latches, which means there is no way you can forget to secure it, as the cover has to be closed in order to print. It is also very easy to pour resin back into the bottle. The balance of the tray allows me to simply let the tray lean on the machine and don't have to hold it. Four, the resin pump works well for feeding resin. It essentially functions like a straw and can fit any resin bottle without requiring you to close the cap. In terms of feeding, it performs very well. However, like other similar resin pumps on the market, it won't pull all the resin back into the bottle, typically leaving about 50 milliliters behind, which you'll still need to pour back manually. This type of resin pump is especially useful if you're unsure how much resin a print will require, as it can continuously feed as needed. It's also handy for large prints when you can't stay near the printer to refill resin yourself, ensuring the pump keeps the print supplied. Additionally, there's a scale at the base of the pump that shows exactly how many grams of resin remain in the bottle. Five, the machine is compact and the screen and USB drive connector are located at the top, which is handy. It also supports RFID. It can set the parameters like exposure time and speed automatically, but it is only useful if you use their resin. Now for the cons. One, the Hallet X1 uses a zoned LED array with 92 individually controlled sections that only activate in areas where the print is located. While this design is efficient and reduces unnecessary heat, it raises a valid concern. If certain zones, such as the center of the screen, are used more frequently than others, they may degrade faster over time, potentially resulting in uneven brightness across the built area. Since the machine is still new, the prints are crisp with good details, in line with other 16K machines I reviewed. So, it's too early to verify whether this imbalance will occur. Two, the Hallet Box Slicer is simple and likely designed for beginners. It's functional but lacks some basic features. When slicing a model, it forces you to add both a base and supports, with no option to add just the base. It doesn't show the estimated resin usage or print time. When sending a print over the network, you have to return to the main menu and click the icon in the top right corner to open the printer manager and start the print. There are also some translation issues, like number of floors instead of layers, and the label one piece print can be confusing. For users who need a more advanced slicer, the printer includes a three month trial of Chitu Box Pro, which is much more refined. However, once the trial ends, it costs $169 per year. If you want free slicers, you can still use the Chitu Box Basic at no cost. Three. After upgrading to the latest screen UI, it doesn't have any major issues, but when a print finishes, the printer doesn't display the total print time. While printing, I would also prefer to see the image of the current layer being printed. Four, there is no air filter or camera included. While the small USB powered air filters found on other machines may not be very effective, having some form of filtration is still better than none. As for cameras, the printer supports an external USB webcam, but I don't think that's a practical solution for a resin printer. Since a resin printer is supposed to be fully enclosed during printing, placing a camera outside won't provide a clear view, like with an open frame FDM printer. I would prefer a built-in camera inside the machine.
In conclusion, the unique designs and convenient features of the Hallett X1 make it stand out from other resin printers on the market. It addresses two major issues that often frustrate beginners, platform leveling and model removal. While resin printing still isn't my favorite compared to FDM, since it requires additional steps like curing and washing, unlike FDM where you can just use the model right after printing, that is just the nature of resin printing. And at the very least, the Hallett X1 is the easiest to use resin printer I've tested so far. For beginners, especially those coming from FDM and looking for easy use in their first resin printer, this machine is an excellent choice. If you're interested, I included the link in the video description. Please also check out my website auroratechchannel.com, which tracks prices for major 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines to help you find great deals. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.